In biblical times, Israel was a unified country consisting of 12 tribes, descendants of a common patriarch. However, the nation faced a significant division that would change its history forever. The divided kingdom in the Bible refers to the period when the Israelite nation split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The divided kingdom began under Saul, the first king anointed by the prophet Samuel. Saul initially demonstrated promising leadership, but his disobedience to divine commandments and impulsive decisions led to his rejection by God. David, the first king, won the people's trust with his bravery against Goliath and was known for his devotion to God. His reign was characterized by great military victories, expansion of Israel's territory, and the consolidation of Jerusalem as the spiritual and physical center of worship. David's son Solomon ascended to the throne and was known for his unparalleled wisdom and ability to judge with justice. However, his political alliances, heavy tributes, and conscription of workers for his grand construction projects generated dissatisfaction among the northern tribes. These factors combined with spiritual departure planted the seeds of future division. Solomon's death was followed by the ascension of his son Rehoboam, whose inflexibility in the face of popular demands precipitated the rebellion led by Jeroboam. The era of the United Kingdom of Israel came to a tumultuous end, leading to a period of division and conflict. The division of the Kingdom of Israel has its roots in Solomon's reign, which was marked by wisdom and greatness. Solomon committed grave transgressions, including marrying foreign women, introducing pagan gods and demanding heavy tributes and forced labor from the northern tribes. This led to dissatisfaction among the people. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam ascended to the throne and representatives of the northern tribes, led by Jeroboam, sought relief from the burdens imposed by Solomon. Jeroboam, who had been warned by prophet Ahijah about his reign, led the revolt of the northern tribes, which resulted in the division of the kingdom into two separate entities. The northern kingdom Israel composed of ten tribes, and the southern kingdom Judah composed of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. Jerusalem remained the capital of Judah, while Jeroboam established his government in Sheim and later in Penal. The division was not only political, but also spiritual, with the north drifting away from rituals and centralization of worship in Jerusalem. Jeroboam introduced the golden calves in Bethlehem and Dan, leading Israel into idolatry. This practice further distanced the northern tribes from Judah and brought divine judgment. Jeroboam's successors, including Nadab, Baasha, Elah, Zimri, Omri, and Ahab, continued to perpetuate idolatry and injustice, creating an environment of corruption and violence. The situation in the northern kingdom became increasingly chaotic, culminating in the rise of Ahab, whose union with Jezebel and promotion of Baal worship represented one of the darkest periods in Israel's history. Despite moments of revival and repentance, the trajectory of the northern kingdom was marked by spiritual and moral decline, leading to divine judgment and the conquest and destruction of Israel by the Assyrians. During the reign of Rim, Judah faced internal and external challenges, including people dissatisfaction due to tax and labor policies inherited from his father Solomon, Idolatry infiltrated Judah, with high places, pillars, and era poles being erected externally. Judah faced threats from neighboring nations, such as Egypt's attack on Jerusalem in 1425, which significantly weakened the kingdom economically and immorally. Despite these challenges, Rim managed to maintain relative stability in Judah. Rim's son Abijah reigned for 17 years and was succeeded by his son Asa. Abijah's military confrontation with Jeroboam was remembered as a victory, but idolatry continued to be a problem in Judah. Abijah's son Aesa attempted to bring religious reforms and eliminate idolatry from the kingdom, bringing peace and prosperity to Judah. The northern kingdom under Jeroboam and his successors was marked by continued idolatry and political instability. Nadab took the throne but was short-lived before being assassinated by Basha. Basha followed Jeroboam's idolatrous ways leading Israel into a period of great apostasy and violence. Ahab's reign was marked by conflicts between God's prophets like Elijah and the idolatrous monarchy, leading to great apostasy and violence. Ahab's death marked the end of an era of great idolatry and violence, but the problems of the northern kingdom were far from over. Instability continued with Ahab's successes, and idolatry remained entrenched in Israelite society. God raised powerful prophets to call the people and kings to repentance, and Elijah was one of them. 
Elijah had a significant encounter with God on Mount Horeb, where God revealed himself in a gentle whisper. Elisha, Elijah's successor, continued to perform miracles and confront idolatry in Israel, purifying the water of Jericho, multiplying the widow's oil, resurrecting the Shunammite son, and healing Naron. Despite the efforts of Elijah and Elisha, idolatry and injustice continued to proliferate in the northern kingdom. The prophets of Israel, including Amos and Hosea, emphasized the unfaithfulness of the people and God's constant love. They warned of judgment and hope for restoration, but Israel's persistent refusal to abandon idolatry and injustice led to divine intervention through the Assyrian conquest. After Ahab's death, the northern kingdom continued to be ruled by his descendants, including Ahaziah and Jordan. God raised Jew to eradicate Ahab's house and purify Israel from idolatry, but Jew also took drastic measures against Ahab's descendants, including killing Jordan, Ahab's son, and Jezebel. Elijah's prophecy against her son Jew continued, as well as the extermination of all of Ahab's descendants and the destruction of Baal's temple. Jew's reign brought stability, but continued to weaken the nation. His sons, Jehosha and Joash, faced constant conflicts with Syria and continued oppression. However, Jehosha's legacy and idolatry continued to haunt the northern kingdom leaving it vulnerable to foreign influences and divine judgments, Joseph II brought a period of prosperity to the northern kingdom known as the Golden Decade, which lasted 41 years. His reign saw the restoration of Israel's borders from Lebanon to the Dead Sea, as prophesied by Jonah. However, this period was short-lived as the lack of true religious and social reform left Israel vulnerable to divine judgment. The prophets warned of impending judgment if the people did not repent and return to God. The centralization of power and the priestly class that often supported idolatrous practices further divided the people, undermining social and religious cohesion. The Golden Period was an era of missed opportunities, where external prosperity masked internal problems. Decay prophets Amos and Hosea warned that the prosperity under Job II was only temporary and that God's judgment was approaching. Hosea spoke of God's unfailing love but warned that Israel's unfaithfulness would bring destruction the people's refusal to repent and return to God sealed their fate, setting the stage for the impending fall of the northern kingdom after Jabam II's death. The fall of Samaria and the Assyrian exile marked a turning point in biblical history, serving as a solemn warning to all nations about the consequences of turning away from God. The fall of Samaria was a grim example of what happens when a nation strays from the ways of God, including political instability, spiritual decline, social injustice and corruption. The Assyrians, known for their cruelty and terror tactics, destroyed cities, deported much of the population, and resettled other peoples in Israel, resulting in a cultural mix that diluted the Israelite identity. The systematic deportation of the Israelite population to various parts of the Assyrian Empire was a strategy to prevent rebellions and weaken organized resistance. This exile also had a lasting impact on the identity of the people of Israel, with the northern ten tribes becoming known as the Lost Tribes of Israel. After the fall of Samaria, the Assyrians dispersed the ten tribes of the northern kingdom to various parts of the empire, a process known as the Assyrian Exile. This forced displacement resulted in the loss of national and religious identity for many Israelites, while some maintained their faith and traditions. Most ended up assimilating into local cultures, and the northern tribes became known as the Lost Tribes of Israel. The dispersion of the Ten Tribes and the transformation of Samaria served as a reminder of divine judgment on idolatry and unfaithfulness, as well as the complex history and identity of the people of Israel. The Samaritans, despite having a common origin with the Jews, developed a distinct religious and cultural identity, accepting only the Pentat as scripture and building their own temple on Mount Giza. This religious and cultural division is reflected in several episodes in the New Testament such as Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well and the parable of the Good Samaritan. The story of the Lost Ten Tribes has generated much speculation and legend over the centuries in various cultures. Some modern religious movements, such as British Israelites and some groups within Judaism, claim a connection with these tribes. The fall of Samaria and the exile of the Ten Northern Tribes are powerful reminders of the consequences of turning away from God and disobedience but also a message of hope in God's promise of restoration and redemption for those who turn back to him. The southern kingdom of Judah experienced periods of reform and resilience under godly kings, 
including Aesa and Jehoshaphat. Aesa, who reigned for 41 years, was remembered for his efforts to purge Judah of idolatry and restore worship to the Lord. He removed idolatrous altars, destroyed a share of poles, and even deposed his grandmother Mara from her position as queen mother due to her idolatry. Asa also strengthened Judah's defenses by building fortified cities and maintaining a well-trained army. Jehoshaphat, Asa's son, continued religious reforms and sought to follow his father's ways, reigning for 25 years. He sent Levites and priests throughout Judah to teach the law of the Lord, strengthening the kingdom's spiritual foundation. He formed alliances with Ahab, king of Israel, marrying his son Jehoram to Allah, daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Jehoshaphat's son Jehoram ascended the throne and began a period of great turmoil in Judah. He married Athaliah, daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, bringing Israel's idolatrous influence into Judah. After Jehoram's death, his son Ahaziah reigned briefly but followed the wicked ways of his mother and grandmother Jezebel. Joash, Jehoshaphat's youngest son, was rescued and hidden in the temple by his aunt Jehosheba and the high priest Jada. After Jehoshaphat's death, Joash abandoned the religious reforms and reverted to idolatry, leading Judah into a period of spiritual decline. Hezekiah, one of Judah's greatest kings, ascended the throne after his father Ahaz's disastrous reign. He stood out for his devotion to God and significant spiritual and political reforms, reigning for 29 years and restoring worship to Yahweh. He called all Israelites to celebrate Passover in Jerusalem, which was a great success. This spiritual revival strengthened the people's faith and solidified worship to God in Judah. Hezekiah, a prominent ruler of Judah, faced significant external threats, particularly from the Assyrian Empire. He sought God's help and received encouraging words from prophet Isaiah, who sent an angel to destroy the Assyrian army, saving Jerusalem from capture. This miracle demonstrated God's power and faithfulness in protecting his people. However, Hezekiah also made mistakes, showing Judah's treasures to Babylonian envoys, leading to Isaiah's prophecy that Babylon would carry everything away, including his descendants into captivity. Despite these setbacks, Hezekiah is remembered for his devotion to God and religious reforms, which brought peace and prosperity to Judah. He also faced a severe illness during his reign, but prayed fervently to God and continued his reforms. His life was extended by 15 years, and his faith in God and willingness to seek divine help in times of crisis are powerful examples of faithful leadership. After Hezekiah's death, his son Manasseh reigned for 55 years, one of the longest in Judah's history, but also known for his extreme idolatry and wickedness. Manasseh built altars for Baal, made Sherah poles, and sacrificed his own children in fire. God declared that he would bring calamity upon Jerusalem and Judah, and Manasseh was captured and taken to Babylon. Despite his late repentance, God allowed him to return to Jerusalem and restore worship to the Lord. Josiah, a remarkable king, began to seek the Lord in his youth and initiated a campaign to purify Judah and Jerusalem of idolatry. He tore his clothes in mourning and repentance, renewing the covenant with the Lord and summoning all the people to Jerusalem to hear the reading of the Book of the Law.